And you need support to keep this project. That's right. Contract. For 30 years, uh, kind of because whether we uh, exist or not, the bears yeah. need to be looked after, and we need to ensure their comfort and safety. Yeah. Look at that. He's, he's fairly relaxed now. Well, he's got, he has got me in a sort of a kind of a grip. Does there. he? <laughs> That's it. Hey! He's <laughs> quite, uh, quite gummy, isn't he? Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, you can see how gentle he's being, although, you yeah. know, one crunch could actually break your wrist quite easily. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> hey, sir. Now that he's finished with it, <laughs> let's get him. <laughs> Nearly all of the bears require specialist dental treatment, as their teeth have been crudely broken, often with a hammer or an iron bar, which leads to serious infections and sometimes worse. A human dentist and one of the very few veterinarians specializing in dentistry traveled from England, donating their time to develop the procedures for treating the bears. Right, do you want to have a yeah, it's quite sick. strong, isn't it? Yesterday I actually physically felt sick smelling that. It was even more parallel than that was. Right. Poor things. They go through all that, the ring through the nose, dance. You think it can't get any worse? I don't know. Yeah. Bit of root canal. This was the bear that was actually responsible for the project starting. When her nose ring got removed, they found a whole rag that had been stuffed into the tooth and it was foul smelling debris. We extracted two teeth and we did root fillings on two teeth. So today is just really to check that everything's healed up properly. We're going to be taking radiographs to make sure that the roots have settled down okay on the teeth that have been filled. The upper canine has healed really well. There's no signs of any periapical lesion there at all. Too. There's good fill So I'm yeah, really, really happy with the way that's healed. And I'm very happy to carry on with the way we're doing our root fillings. The extraction site on the right healed side beautiful. is healed well. Certainly no signs of any infection. So I'm really happy with the way, the way things are going. There is no doubt that these bears can be properly cared for. And whilst it will never be possible to return them to the wild, they can be allowed to range freely in a protected area. And it's uh, 145 acres, which is um, about seven times the size of the existing sanctuary. Mm. and uh, this land will allow us to certainly clear the whole of, the, of northern India of all the bears on the street so we can actually bring them all in here. Uh, you come back in five years time and see what this looks like, I think it'll be superb. That's amazing what you managed to do in, in the time that you have been here, I mean it's, you know. Well, we are small, but we're hands on, as yeah. you've seen. Yeah. Oh. You, can, you can get people to do most things if you're enthusiastic enough. It was clear that Wildlife SOS and International Animal Rescue would also need a facility in southern India. Fortunately, they were invited by the Forestry Department to step in at the Banagata National Park, assuming responsibility for all the bears kept there and to develop the sanctuary for the future. Not only did the park already have an ecotourism objective that might help support the bears in the future, but it had an infrastructure that could quickly and economically be built upon. The old pens or cages were not really fit for purpose, but they could easily be adapted. Most importantly, the bears needed to be let out of their pens, and for this to be possible, a rehabilitation and socialization program needed to be implemented. How are they behaving now that they've got this brand new enclosure outside from here? Well, what's wonderful is that we've got socialization pens now. This whole sanctuary is 30 acres, which is another 10 acres on top of what you've already seen at Agra. Mm -hmm. So basically they've got lots of room to go into, but before we can let them go free-ranging, we have to get them to socialize and understand how each bear interacts with each other. Well, it's great to see that you're not using these, and now it's purely just a den. They come in when they want to, and they come in to be fed, but they're never actually compartmentalised into here. Yeah, what's the most important thing for me is that the bears have now got a choice. If they want to come in here and feed, if they want to come in here and sleep, they can do what they like. There's no need for them to come in. They can stay out all night. They're nocturnal animals. They like to be out at night, but they were forced to stay in here all day. So I'm thrilled that they're now allowed outside. Wow, this is much more open. This is just the start. This is to get them socialised so that they can uh, understand, we can understand how they're going to react together. Well, and the thing I think is so obvious about this enclosure is just that the animals behaviourally seem so happy and so contented. Do you think that's, um, that's mimicked by their physical health? 
It seems to be. I mean, uh, everything I'm getting from Aaron the vet is that these animals are now getting uh, the use of all their, you know, their liver and that sort of thing back, where they have a, a, a really reduced liver rate before they, you know, before we took over. Um, also, we're seeing them just jumping around and enjoying life. Obviously, being in a cage for three or four years is actually going to reduce all the muscle tone. So now they're really getting. You can see how they're just jumping around and getting really boisterous, which is fantastic to see. Back at Agra. Kartik was able to show Scott what will hopefully be replicated at the new sanctuary in Banagata. This is a wobble tree and um, it's, it's a part of the enrichment that we do for the bears. Right. So this wobble tree actually goes up in here, okay. this hole in this ground, and we put all the interesting stuff that you're carrying, dates and gram and honey, and we put it on the top. And then the bear has to shake it, he has to put in some effort to get the food down. I see. And then he has fun. So and do you do that because in the wild they shake a tree to get the food? Absolutely. It, ah, okay. it kind of gets them to do uh, what the normal routines would be in the wild and what display na natural behavior. Yeah, he's figuring it out. Oh, look at that. There's a bit of wobble action going on. <laughs> <laughs> it's raining food. <laughs> um, and is it not an idea at the sanctuary to try and make this animal wild? So shouldn't, should we really be in here? Well, the idea is to try and simulate wild environment for the bear, but at the same time, we have to keep in mind that the bear actually never, ever, oh, he's figuring it out. <laughs> Thinking of getting them back, released back in the wild is definitely out of question. It doesn't, it's not a possibility at all that we can think of, because these bears don't have any of the wild instincts that a, that a cub, which would grow with its mother would spend the first one and a half to two years learning from the mother where the natural water sources are in the forest, which fruit to eat, which one not to eat, which is poisonous, and how to avoid man and not get into villages and stuff. But these bears wouldn't know that. Because they've grown up with people, they would assume that people feed me, so all people must be cool. And they would probably go to the head to the nearest village if you actually release the bear. So hypothetically, I mean, you would have a serious problem on your hand, a man-animal conflict problem. And in order to avoid that, you all you can do is give them a natural environment in a contained, a controlled environment, which is what we're trying to do. So they um, get less associated with people. Do you move them within the sanctuary? Yes, what we have is a system of socialization and conditioning. So this is a, a one of probably one of our smallest enclosures, which is still quite large. But this is mainly for the blind bears, so we can keep them under observation. These were bear, the same bears that weren't even coming out of their dens, but now they're confident enough to venture out of the dens, play with all this enrichment that you see, go into the pond, even have a dip in summer. Well, what we'll do is, um, you know, we've got some more toys and things, and I know there's some other bears eagerly waiting to uh, come out and enjoy all this enrichment. So should we pop all this down and, uh, and see if they enjoy the wobble tree as well? Absolutely, why not? Great. This charming little sound is known as bear song. It is a comforting sound made by a relaxed bear. It is also said to possibly aid digestion, but to the people that work with the bears, it is also the sound of success. A happy bear. We've only been here since December 2002, and I hope you'll agree that we've done a fantastic job with Wildlife SOS to make this sanctuary so much better for the bears. <laughs> but we've got a new project, which is just across the river. It's 145 acres of, of land that's been donated by the forestry department. We need to build a wall and we need to actually put 30,000 trees and all the infrastructure to make their life better. So please can you help us complete this job and get all the bears off the streets of India. It's a real, real challenge but we can do it.